All right, today I'm joined by my mother and father-in-law, David and Claire. They're gonna help us make biscuits and gravy. Um, they're gonna show you uh, how they make biscuits and gravy, which is me and my wife's favorite, probably Isley's too. She'll be jumping in to help. Uh, we're gonna start with David, who's gonna talk about sausage really fast and then start cooking it, and then Claire will jump into the biscuits. Okay. Since we're using a commercial restaurant blend sausage, which in my opinion is extremely bland, we're gonna add some ground sage. Just a little to taste. If you don't want to do this, you'll probably just buy your sausage in the store that's already flavored up. And red pepper, just because I'm a chili head. Sorry about that. <laughs> you just blend it in. And get it all mixed up. We're not going to add any salt and pepper to the sausage itself because as you make the gravy, you'll do that later. When you think you've got it mixed in fairly well, then you'll drop your sausage in a pan and brown it. Medium heat. Now. Are you gonna make that uh, all the gravy in that pan? Nope. I'm just gonna brown the sausage in this pan because the batch of gravy we're making today will be too big to fit in this pan. But it cooks better in a cast iron. Yeah. I like I like to cook my sausage in cast iron. I always like to brown the meat in cast iron just because I don't know. I like cast iron. <laughs> Does that thing pause or you just leave it running? I just leave it running. I can edit stuff. Edit, out. edit it all later. Okay. And while you're but while you brown your sausage, you just keep make sure that it's not cooked in a big lump. Just keep breaking it up as you brown it and stir it. Does that camera actually show show this? It, yeah, we can see. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Okay. So while we are while David is browning, I'm Claire, by the way. While David is browning the sausage. We're going to go ahead and turn the oven on for the biscuits to 425, which is a, you can help me, which is a really good temperature to cook your biscuits at. And I better change my shelves too. Let's see. You want to cook your biscuits somewhere around in the middle of your oven. So I've moved my shelves to where they need to be. So to start with for our biscuits, we're going to use a half a cup of butter. We're going to use cultured buttermilk blend because um, I don't get to the grocery store much. We live way out in the country and we don't keep buttermilk in the refrigerator. So this is a really good substitute for that. We're going to use self-rising flour because self-rising flour is the flour that is already prepared with um, baking powder and baking soda to rise in your oven to make your biscuits rise and so that's what we need for this. Um, is there one move? <clears throat> okay so I've got I've got a big bowl and Isley is going to help measure my flour out. I need two cups of flour or four cups of flour. Did you mention it's a double batch? Uh -huh. Yeah, this is a double batch we're making. It makes 24 biscuits. So I'm going to get Isley to start the flour there. 
Okay, she's got her flour in there, and I'm going to scrape off the top, and we're going to need eight of these to make two cups. No, four cups. Okay, dump. So we have to count. One. Two. Get a little more. Whoa. That's all right. Okay. Three. Three. And the reason that we are scraping the top off of our flour is to make sure that we have the amount that we want and not more. Sure. Thank you for counting. Come on. We need four, one more. Get some more. More. So you don't want to have your cup not full, but you don't want it over full either. Five. Five. Six. Six. Seven. Seven. Oh, we got to dig deeper. This is the last one. Eight. And I'm tapping it gently, and that's just to make sure that the flour is settled in there. You don't want to hit it hard because you don't want the Eight. flour to be pack dense. Down. Yeah, you don't want it to pack down. I'm going to set that aside for just a second. Let's get my butter ready. Okay, so I'm put my flour away. For scoot it back, and then I'll put it over here. Okay, the next thing we need is our butter. You can open my butters for me. Yeah. Okay, good. You open one too. So each one of these sticks, you can look on your butter, and it says there are eight tablespoons, or a quarter cup is half of it, a third of a cup is marked, and then um, the whole stick is a half a cup. So we're going to open these up, and I want my butter pretty cold in my biscuits <coughs> because I'm um, you want I, the butter to flake. I want the butter to help make flakes in the, or make the biscuits flaky. 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 Okay. In layers. In layers. Yeah. yeah. So you don't want the butter to melt in. You don't want the butter to melt in. So I'm going to leave those sit there. I'm going to use them in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut my butter up a little bit to make it easier to work with while still staying pretty cold. You want to cut one? I'll let you cut. I'll Once. let you cut it the other direction a little bit. But let me get most of it. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Once. Once your sausage is brown, all the pink is gone. It is cooked, and so you can set it to the side for the, and wait for the next wait. step to making your gravy. So I'm gonna give David a. Just set that aside too because mm -hmm. you're going to use a different bowl for your gravy. Yeah, I don't even so need So you don't bowl. even need it. No. All right, I'm going to let you cut, honey, in just a sec. I'm going to show you what you're going to get to cut. Don't do that. Okay. Okay, I'm going to let you cut them this way. Okay. So I'm cutting my butter into little chunks. I'm going to let you cut the other one, okay? But this you, this knife is sharp, sharp. Do you want to use your little knife? Can you still see his pan see over here? Find it. No, no. Okay. Give, I'm gonna give you two sticks. All right. okay. Once, once all my sausage was brown, I set the pan over here and set something under one side so it can be at an angle and let all the grease drain out. And it'll sit here and drain for a while until we're ready to start doing our gravy from this point. Good job. Set that back out of the way. That is right here. Okay. All right. The next thing that I need is my flour back. 
and into my flour I'm going to put my buttermilk powder. So my buttermilk powder, instead of using a cup and a half of buttermilk, I'm going to use the equivalent of my buttermilk powder and water. So to make a cup of buttermilk, I need four tablespoons of buttermilk blend and a cup of water. Hang on. Okay, hang on. Um, I need a cup and a half, so each tablespoon makes one quarter of a cup. So I need six tablespoons of buttermilk powder in my flour. So Isley's going to help me with that a little bit. Let me get my little knife back out. All right. That'll be one. One. How many do we need, hon? Um, do you remember? Six. That's right. Two. two. Hold it up so I can get two. Thank you. Three. Step down. Yeah, there you yeah. go. <laughs> okay, that might help. All right. Four. Hmm? Four. This buttermilk powder, I get it at Walmart. You can get it at um, Kroger. You five. probably get it at Dillon's. Was that five? Yeah. Thank you for counting. Six. Six. All right. We're good with that. <laughs> How much water do we need? Do you remember? Um, six. Six. Quarter cup, so we need um, a cup and a half. Yep. Of there. cold water because we don't want to melt our butter. All right. Make sure that looks right. I'm a measuring cup. You want um, the <laughs> that's a hard one, isn't it, Jack? Yeah. You want the bottom of of the line to be on your mark, and then there's like a little bubble on top, sort of looking thing. Sciency, we don't know. Sciency, okay. We don't know yeah. the science. Just, just the science. get it. It's capillary just get, action. There you go. Right, these are grandma's <laughs> biscuits. Just get them close, okay? All right, now I'm going to get my antique wire blender. Okay. We're going to stir it up. In the culinary up. world, it's pastry blender. A pastry blender, yeah. And we're going to stir it up. Okay, now we're gonna get it. Make sure it's all stirred up. Are we all stirred up good? Yep. Okay. Stirred up. And we are going to put our butter in there now. So it? now I've got my chopped up butter. I'm gonna. Isley and I are gonna dump her in there. Okay. Wow. Wow. All right. So usually I just kind of start with my hands to to get all my butters covered with some flour, okay? And okay. then you, then I'm gonna start chopping with my cut blender, it cutting it in, okay, I'm cutting it in. So, there's a whole bunch of junk in my pastry blender, so I'm gonna just cut it out with a knife so I can sort of start over. Now there are multiple ways you can do this. If you don't have a pastry blender, hang on just a second, you can take this butter, and this is this is the way the a lot of British do it. I mean this is kind of a British way. You can just kind of flatten your butter into little flakes like that. You don't want them too small, but this it makes little layers of air pockets in your biscuits which make them real light. So this is one way to do that if you don't have a pastry blender. But since I do, and Isley does, and she really wants to use it, she's gonna <laughs> she's gonna work on that with the pastry blender. Other ways you can do it, um, if you don't have a pastry blender, is you can use a fork. Yep. Uh, wire whisk works well. Wire whisk. Um, you want these pretty much the size of a pea is usually what you go for mm -hmm. with biscuits. So um, the other thing to remember on pastry blenders, uh, all almost all I've ever seen are curved. So it's actually easier if you follow the curve instead of just going up and down. Rocket. Yes. Rocket back yeah, and that forth. That's thing. right. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people think that you just got to do this and then they sit there and they scrape it all out. But a lot of times if you just rock back and forth, um, usually your bowl's round anyway, so it actually makes it easier. So um, as you rock and push flour in. Uh, it helps break it up and it helps take it off as well. So, uh, for some people, they don't like to get their hands dirty. I don't mind. Uh, yeah, I don't either. But you shouldn't be. There, there are those people there. <laughs> there. 
who don't like it. Just make sure your nails are clean and you're good. No, we're no, not ready yet, no, honey. Wait. When it comes Maybe. time. You need a fork. I'll let you help with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we want to rock. You gotta push down a little bit. Hard, yeah, you gotta push hard. Okay. All right, just creep it out. All right, I'm gonna take over now for a minute. You're gonna get to cut. Dipping this out. You guys that? Well, we're doing. We do things together here. Yeah, you do them all together. Okay. In the meantime. The, most of the grease is drained out of the grape, out of the sausage. So I just dip it out with a spoon. Some people will just throw this away. Since I've got a yard full of big dogs that really here. love it, I'm going to make more gravy using this leftover grease for my dogs. Because they're special and they deserve it. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, we have some butter chunks in here that are still pretty good size, but we've incorporated a lot of it. So Isley's ready to put the water in here. So I'm going to dig a, a hole in this and call it a well, okay? And Isley's going to pour my water in that well, and I'm going to use a fork to incorporate it. Okay, in you go, all of it. Okay, I'm going to use a fork to pull my flour mix to the center into the water. And so I'm going to go use a, a motion where I go up under my flour into the center. Okay? And I don't want to work this dough real hard. The biggest mistake people make when they're making biscuits and things is they work this too they, hard and they try to mix it. it. Yeah. Trying to mix everything in too hard. Okay, so that's pretty much mixed in. Can I tell them? Can I tell them something? I guess you can tell them something. And it's also sticky. And it's a sticky flour mix. Okay, so I'm going to bring a pastry, um, what do you call this? Pastry mat. Pastry mat into the mix here so that we have something to work on. And we're going to just dump that whole pile carefully onto our pastry mat. Now I do have to work it to a little bit more. I see you're going to get that done, so you can just hold your undies on. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm just going to kind of mix this into a workable batch of dough but I don't want it to be overworked. So you can see, hang on, okay. You get your chance, honey. Okay. It's, a, it's sticky, it's sticking on my hands, okay. I'm gonna call that pretty good, okay. It looks like a flaky, messy mess, doesn't it? Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to clean up the edges a little bit. I'm going to get a rolling pin and I'm going to let Isley roll it out to about a half an inch, three quarter of an inch thick. Let me see which, uh, I don't have my recipe for it yet. So we're just going to kind of eyeball it till Grandma thinks it's right. Quarter. Huh? Quarter. Quarter. Half, half inch. Oh, half an inch. Yeah, at least half an inch. Okay, hang on. So I'm going to put some of my flour on my rolling pin. All right. To and prevent the dough from sticking. To keep it from sticking. Put a little bit on top if I want. All right. Nisley's going to roll the dough. Whip. Carefully. Not that hard, honey. Okay. Look, let's put you back over on this side or up, up higher or something. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Are we ready now? Okay, you don't push. You don't have to push real hard. We're not trying to. We're not trying to smush it. We're trying to roll it. If we if we want it smushed, stand up. Come on. Are you good? Okay. We don't want to smash it. We just want to push it. Okay. Does that make more sense? I'm gonna put a little bit more flour on here. Okay. 
All right, we want to push it, but not smash it. Okay, so, yeah, that's a lot better. I can feel that you're doing this much better. Let's go that way a little bit. A little bit more. to temperature. Go the other way, that way. All right, I'm gonna double check my recipe just because that's always a good thing to do. Now, don't you smush it anymore. Okay. I'll smush it. Let's see. It's the next pie. I know. You getting excited about that? Okay, so that's three quarters. So we're, we're, You're pretty, fine. we're still pretty good. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to get Isley some flour in a bowl so that she has something to dip her biscuit cutter in. Is this big enough? Or is that too little? Big That's big. a good one. All right. Because the uh, biscuit cutter will stick, Isley's got her little thing of flour to straighten that side up. Okay. You know what to do. Okay, turn. Some, some okay. people would just use a glass okay. or something, anything round to cut their biscuits, but we have found that the sharper your cutter is, the, the more your biscuits will puff up and flake out. While she's doing that, getting those ready, I'm going to go ahead and grease my pan with a little butter and I'll just put it on with my I'm hands. It a little closer like that. Well, you don't have as much right, leftover dough. Help you have to put them, put them mm -hmm. on, help her put them on. Like this close? Like that. Well, here you go. Dip it in the flour now. Dip it in the flour. Okay. I keep dipping it in there. You don't do it every time, but once it starts How to close do you put these, Claire? Uh, you're going to put 12 on the pan. That's so close. Three by four. And, and even them out when you get them on there. Yeah, most standard size cookie sheets will hold 12 nice biscuits. You gotta dip it again. Yeah, if you put them too close when they bake, they stick together and they don't cook in as well. Okay, stop for right now. We're gonna get quite 24 minutes to do this. All right. All right, Isaac, where are you going? Drying our hands. Drying our hands. Okay. We may have made our biscuits a little thick, which is okay. And we're not gonna get 24 out of here, but we're gonna work at it, aren't we? Now, if you don't have a biscuit cutter, you can do this a little different, and I think we'll do these, the square. Square. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna get a little bit of your flour here, girl. So if you've got a sharp knife, you can use it. I have a pastry scraper that I usually use. This is a pastry scraper. But I think I'll use a knife just to show you because most people have knives in their kitchen. So I'm gonna come. Roll Are you up. making a sport or what? No, you wouldn't. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of make that into a little rectangle. Come back here, you're not done yet. I'd say it's thick for three quarters. All right. No, we're not gonna do this. No, we're not we're doing that this square. time. We're gonna cut these square. But. Okay. okay. So I have a nice sharp knife I'm going to use. I don't cut my pastry mat, won't it? Um, well, you don't cut too hard, you should be fine. All right. So I'm going to put a little bit of flour on my knife. Yeah, you can do it for just a part of the Well, it wouldn't give you the sharp knife. I'm going, to go, I'm going to do this way and you do the other way for me, okay? I didn't really cut those even, but uh, it's 
it's going to be okay. I see. You don't want to press real hard. You're backwards there, man. Okay. Yeah. You got it? Okay. Because one of the things about biscuits is you want them to have a nice sharp edge, uh, if possible, to because this will rise nicely when you've got that sharp edge and I've got a little... It makes nice, nice flaky layers. Uh -huh. Something she didn't do that I would do differently is I would cut the edge off oh, first. Oh, I it's see. Okay. Yeah. Because um, what's going to happen, and this is probably going to happen, is they're going to they're going to rise, but they're going to rise crooked. But that's okay. We're not we're not going for a restaurant biscuit I'll here. Put the last no. One. You're gonna whoa! All right, come on. We're going for the biscuits you made at home. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, these, these are, are biscuits you make at home. Right. We're worried about what they Under taste spot. like, not what they look like. All right. They're still going to look pretty. They go. um, if you want, at this point, if you want to make them browner, um, you can brush them with some milk or some butter on the top before you put them in the oven. Um, that's only if you want them really golden brown. Um, most restaurants brush with cream or uh, milk, and that's it. But on these, when I make them, usually when I, when they come out of the oven, I brush them with melted butter. And so that's what we're going to do today. Okay, how long do we cook them for, Isley? Weeks. We cook them, I think, for 13 to 15 minutes. No. Okay. All right, so we're going to make... Play your game, Isley. We're going to make some gravy, sausage gravy, to go with our mix here. So I usually start with a mix of my flour and water and milk to make my biscuit gravy and we have our pan here and we have to have our grease in our pan so i'm gonna put um, a just a spoon spoon yeah okay your grease gives your gravy flavor and um you should just cheat my dogs out of gravy that's right there <laughs> I put most of the grease back in my gravy. She's Actually, dumping so, it all. Oh, okay. She's putting it all Sausage back in. Sausage gravy, grease, and pan. Um, to make my um, gravy liquid, I'm going to put a half a cup of flour. It's your ba it is your basic white gravy. Uh, in my jar, maybe, mm, maybe more. Okay. About three quarters of a cup of flour. I'm going to mix this half full of water. And I'm using cold water. And I'm going to shake the living daylights out of it. Now there are more than one, there's more than one way to make gravy. You can make it where you make a roux in the pan with your grease and flour. But for this type of gravy, it's going to get stirred so much and the sausage is going to be in it that it will not be lumpy by the time you're done. Okay, so I got my milk ready and I'm going to fill this about the rest of the way with milk. And I'm going to probably have to add liquid to my gravy before it's all said and done to get the appropriate thickness of my gravy. So I'm just going to start with this. When it thickens up, I'll add liquid until I'm happy with it. And we're back to a medium to medium high heat on this electric range. Okay. Since I'm not fortunate enough to have a gas range, I don't know what size of flame you'd use. I don't have one either. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Medium is yeah. a good temp. Electric ranges are pretty tough. Medium is a good temp. And as you can see, you just begin to just constantly stir. thing with gravy is you want lower heat and slowly bring it up as opposed to higher heat and have to bring it down. If you <laughs> get it too high, it's, not, it's hard to come back. Yeah. So. yeah. And you don't want it to burn to the bottom of the pan. No. That That is a gravy thing you do not want. So um, where you could use a spoon with your gravy, we tend to use our spatulas with our gravy because that keeps it, it from sticking the to the, the bottom of the pan. And I use a spatula with 
slots in it because then the liquid can go through it like a slotted spoon. So into our gravy we are going to also put salt and pepper. Um, Basically to taste. To taste. So I'm going to start with about a teaspoon of salt. I may add more later when we taste it. I usually use um, a pepper grinder and it takes about, oh, for this batch of gravy, I'd probably do about 40 grinds. But since I just recently bought some fresh ground, pre-ground, I'm just going to dump some in my hand and figure, all right, that looks like a good starting point. <laughs> if you have a bigger hand than I do, you better like pepper. <laughs> General rule on salt and pepper is two to one so usually it's two parts salt one part pepper but but i got it backwards. General, that's why I, said general yeah, I, I did it general. backwards probably because well no for gravy yeah usually you want to go the other way um the whole point of white gravy usually is the pepper yeah stands out and and you might want to uh adjust your salt differently than i do because if you have hypertension or high blood pressure and our, our salt intake limited, then keep that in mind as you make your gravy that that it's a two taste thing. So if you can eat salt and like salt, go ahead. If you need to reduce your salt intake, you can add pepper and that's good too. Oh. Adding milk to the gravy. Um, I think I might, I thought I might need some more Flour, so I'm going to go ahead and mix that up in case. As, as, you, <clears throat> as you start heating your gravy mix, the flour will cause it to start thickening. And as it starts thickening, then you decide whether or not you need to add any liquid to it, depending on how thick it starts getting. This one started getting thick quick. Okay. I usually use about half and half milk to water in my gravy. This may be a little more milky. Um, okay, what do you think? I can't remember you're going to add some more. Yeah, David thought maybe I didn't have enough gravy making for the amount of sausage that we had, so we're, we're adding some flour and water mix, another quart cup. So proportionally it should be somewhere in the neighborhood of a quarter cup of flour to two to three cups of liquid. But keep an eye on it and add liquid if you need to. We use all-purpose flour in our gravy. I'm getting ready to take my biscuits out. So we're going to get these biscuits. We're going to take a look at our biscuits. So we need a, a pot of water. All right. And we're going to look at these and see what we think. If we want a nice I brown. I think they would rotate the pan. Yeah. yeah. yeah there's, they're more down on this side. So we're going to turn that pan around. Those look good. And cook for a couple more minutes. Okay. Ready? Yep. Okay, your oh the gravy's looking good. Your gravy is starting to we think we're recording starting to boil a little. All right, so the the gravy is looking really good here. It's starting to boil, and, and you keep bubble. you keep stirring, and you want to cook it for a good one to two two minutes at least after it starts boiling, so that you can get all the Pretty raw good. flour taste out. All right, I'm gonna look at my biscuits again here. They look uh, a little better. They look a little better. I think we're gonna call those pretty done. I don't want them overdone because then they get dry. Okay, this hot ice, remember. Let me get these other ones out. And I'm gonna turn my oven off. 
Now, ideally, you want to have your biscuits be pretty much this nice golden brown on top. We have some that are and some aren't, but I don't want to risk the uh, getting them too dry. All right, so don't forget we're hot now. Isley's going to take some butter. We put butter in a dish with a little pastry brush, and she's going to brush the tops on these. Oh. Uh, okay. All right. So she's brushing away for us, and as she brushes them, I'm going to put them in a nice basket that I have put a, a dish towel in, clean dish towel. So brush away, girl, and if you need more butter, I'll get you some, okay? All right, the gravy's been boiling away for a couple of minutes now. I just oh, tasted man. it. And it's still not quite, it's not quite done. It needs another minute or so of boiling. Yeah, so you don't want a raw flour taste in it, on it. And at this point, I have noticed after tasting it, I would say it needs more salt. More salt. So again, salt is a taste thing. So I'm going to pour about a teaspoon in my hand. In the mix it goes. Taking my biscuits away and putting them in the basket. I was better doing away, a girl. wonderful job of buttering those biscuit tops. All right, let me taste the honey. Yes, yeah, so you can. All right, so we're going to taste. Got enough pepper in it? I believe so. It's hot, blistering hot. That tastes pretty good to me. So we're going to go ahead and put our sausage back in there. Okay. You got all this? Get At that this one? point, your gravy. So they Tastes like all the flour has been cooked do. out. Okay. The salt and pepper are the right ratios. And so we add the in cook, we go with add the our pre-cooked sausage back into it. Okay. I'm taking this pan away and we're going to start you on the other pan. Okay. Isley is our best little biscuit making helper here. Yep, I am. Yes, you are. And at this point, you can turn your heat off under your pan since your gravy is done. You can mix your sausage back in. And look at that. And then we taste it. We have to taste it again. You should give it one more taste to make sure everything is right. I got myself a clean spoon. And some hot gravy. I think that's going to work really well. Now, if you are a chili head, um, you can put a variety of different things on your biscuits and gravy when you eat them. Uh, depending on what your favorite is. So if you want to spice it up a little bit, you know, we've got some different hot sauces that you that don't worry about that. that add to it i don't put it in the gravy though i'm allergic to hot sauce and you're not allergic to hot sauce you just don't like it all right let's get the rest of it put in here girl weirdo but they're hot okay i can't have to have go through life and not put like them hot in stuff our basket let's get them all in there and see how they Right, rose up and have nice little air pockets in them and layers and flaky. I'm going to break one open to let you see it. I think I'll try a little square one and Isley and I will see what we think about it, okay? We'll okay, what do you think? I'm going to break it open. Does it smell good? Do you want some butter on it? Yeah, it smells good. A little butter on it? You want to try it? Nope. Nope. Grandpa's going to wait till he gets his. So we have a, some nice crumb in there with with our biscuits. Can you see that? Uh, yeah, I think so. So, what do you think about that? Nice there. homemade. Now you've got good old southern style biscuits and gravy. Mm. Okay, for our plate up, take a biscuit. I'm gonna. I usually break it in half or crumble it. You don't have to. It's up to you though. Got. Three of these biscuits. Grab 
gravy on top. Okay, and then I like to finish mine with a little hot sauce. You don't have to. Little hot sauce, a little black pepper. We are good to go.